Greetings, Earthlings, or whoever else may be listening. Uh, we are going to talk today about the long-awaited Earth Tools Precision Depth System, or Tiller Depth System. We haven't decided exactly what we're going to call it yet, but this is our version, the Earth Tools version of the BCS uh, Precision Depth Roller, PDR, they came out with about a month ago. Um, curious piece of history on this particular implement, or accessory I should say, is we actually built a prototype about three years ago. And uh, it was kind of a crude prototype, but it was somewhat effective, and we found out some problems with it. Um, and at the time, we, were, we had an intern working with us that was, that was kind of spearheading the design of the thing. It was an engineering student. And so got this prototype built, figured out what the problems were. The intern used up his 90 days with us and went back to school. Um, and the project, unfortunately, just got shelved and sat on the shelf for years. And we kind of forgot about it because we were busy innovating with other things like we do at Earth Tools. And uh, then one day we saw that BCS had come out with a roller like this. And we're like, oh, shoot, we kind of forgot about that. So we decided it was time to get it out of the mothballs, especially because we saw the price BCS was charging, which we thought was just a little astronomical for something that is not even a PTO-powered device. So, here, a couple months later, we've got the Earth Tools depth roller. Uh, this is a 30-inch BCS tiller on a BCS 749. This is our demo unit that we've been beating up for a few years now. Uh, and you can see by all the grass on it, we've been mowing lately. Uh, so what this consists of is a mounting bracket, the actual roller assembly, and the, uh, the roller adjustment, which we'll get to when it all gets together. And then we've got an optional roller type as well, a slotted roller, which we'll also talk about later. Uh, but the standard roller that we're going to supply with it is a solid roller. Um, and let me just walk through the assembly process right now, and I can talk some about the features of this device. So normally you would have bolts in these four holes. That is, the tiller comes supplied with bolts in all of these holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've already removed these center two. They're right here. Uh, we will be supplying this accessory with some longer bolts because this, uh, this bracket is going to bolt in right here. And so you need a little longer bolt. We'll discard those. And put it on with the longer bolt. These are 20 millimeter bolts, or roughly three quarters of an inch long. Use the same nuts that came with it. Usually put the bolts in from the bottom up, as you can see. It's a lot easier than trying to do it the other way. Now is when you fast forward your YouTube. You don't have to watch me deal with all this. Be careful when you reach under here because there are tiller tines under here. And if you just stick your hand in there uh, like there was nothing there, you could kind of nick yourself on a tine. Okay. I'm going to tighten these. I'm going to cheat because I have an electric impact wrench, but obviously. Standard wrenches work fine too. 13 millimeter fasteners, all these. Getting the wrench on blind is always fun. Okay. Alright. Now that that is mounted, you could actually leave that mounted all the time. That is, if you're going to take the roller on and off for different applications. For example, if you want to till without this roller sitting in the back, uh, making the machine longer and heavier, you would just leave this on and separate the, the roller assembly by these three fasteners. One, two. So now we're going to go ahead and hook this up. It's just on the long side. And the way we've designed ours in uh, juxtaposition with BCS's roller, is we leave the rear flap on because we know from experience taking this rear flap on and off is an absolute nightmare because these pins here 
The cotter pins are extremely hard to get to. Uh, they don't want to come back out of the holes. And once you've got this uh, tiller that's been in service for a little while, you'll find that with a little rust built up on these pins, the rubber bushings in here do not want to slide off. It is an act of Congress to get those things on and off of there. So BCS's design of having this kind of rubber flap that hangs down in here instead of this, we think is a, is a real problem because it's going to make it very inconvenient to get it on and off. So we are just putting that flap up like this. <clears throat> So we've got little shoulder bolts. This is an Allen headed shoulder bolt we're using for the pivot point here with a washer. I'm also going to apply a little grease to it because I don't like just bare metal on metal. Well, it takes a quarter inch Allen wrench, very common size. Got to make sure that it goes that the that the shoulder goes into the large hole maneuver around a little bit till it goes all the way in and tightens down and can still pivot freely. Good. We'll do the same thing on the other side. A little grease. Can't see over here. That's okay. Dark side of the moon. Well, probably be a little easier if the tiller were uh, up off the ground, but I'm not doing that. So just doing that. So I've got this thing jammed in place. That was pretty smart, Bill. Oh, so much easier when things line up. linkage here. This is actually a 9 16 bolt and nut. We built this thing in America, so actually make this a little easier. We use standard fasteners rather than metric on the bolts that are holding this thing together. So this is a lock nut and what you're going to do is just bring it down until it's relatively snug. It still moves pretty easily be able to pivot. Now you're assembled. Done. Now after you tighten this bolt here and get that in place, on the back end I want to point out, though you can't really see it from the angle of the camera, but this strap here has two holes at the back. You only see one from that angle, but the bolt that's at the back here has the possibility of being in two different positions. So it'll be shipped to you probably with this bar dismounted and you have a choice of where to put it. The two holes is for different sized tires on the tractor, okay? Because this changes your overall geometry of how this brace bar jacks that roller down away from the ground. So just select the position that's right for your tractor. Basically, um, if it's in the wrong position, you won't be able to get this thing low enough to jack the tiller up off the ground. So if it won't lift your tiller tines out of the ground for transport, put it in the other hole. Now once this is mounted and you're just taking the roller on and off, you probably do it in under two minutes once you get good at it. So um, this is your release handle that's going to allow you to move this up and down. When you adjust this up, that's going to allow your tiller to go down into the ground and then this is going to hit the ground. And then when you're all the way down here, when you push all the way down, it's going to hold the tiller tines up off the ground for trans. Also, our adjustment range is not quite as big as BCS's. We have a range here that will allow you to, on one end, lift the thing off the ground for transport, like it is now. Uh, and at the, at the deepest, you're going to have roughly three inches of penetration into the ground. We figure that if you're using the roller, you want to control your depth at a shallow setting, somewhere between zero and three inches, we figure. Um, if you're going to be doing a deep till, you just take the thing off. I mean, you don't typically want to deal with something sticking out the back if you're doing a deep till. So just take the two bolts out, drop that bolt off. You could even replace this with a little quick pin that went through here with a cotter pin. Uh, and then just take the thing off. But the, the idea of this whole the system is to be able to uh, very finely calibrate the shallow tilling depth of the tiller. Because the problem with tillers in general uh, is that they, they till too deep on their own. They need some kind of fine depth regulation system for that shallow till. 
So that's all that. Now, since we are doing a design where the flap stays in place and since it passes over the top of the roller, uh, we didn't deal with that kind of mud flap looking thing that BCS has going uh, between the hood and the, and the roller. And we were able to shorten this up considerably. That is, their roller is way back here because it has a mud flap coming down and up. The reason they had to do that is because they're using a roller that is slotted. It's perforated. There are holes in it. And if you have an exposed roller with holes in it that's subjected to the force of tiller tines throwing the soil backwards, which is where this tiller tine, is, the tiller is discharging soil to the rear. What happens is, and this is what we ran into on our first prototype, we used a mesh roller like you would find on one of our R2 Power Harrows, and the, the soil being discharged back from the tines filled up that mesh roller solid with soil within 10 minutes of use and made it, of course, when you lift it out of the ground, the thing weighed 50 pounds extra because of all the soil you were carrying around with you. And we're like, well, that's not going to work. So we went to a solid roller as the standard roller design. The solid roller will press out the bed perfectly. You'll get an extremely nice flat bed, uh, which is great for, you know, your precision multi-row seeders. You know, everything, everything works really well. A lot of full-size soil working equipment that you will find on large farm tractors, three-point hitch mount tillers and bed formers use solid rollers to shape the beds, so this is not unheard of in the industry. Um, and it doesn't fill up with soil. We're able to tuck it up really close. We can stick it right under the flap, real close to the back of the tiller, uh, to get the minimum length projection on this thing. So we've still got a very compact machine that even though our roller weighs a little more than the BCS America one, the machine actually feels lighter. We've, we've had one of the BCS America's ones here. We took a measurement on it. We tested it. Uh, this one actually has the impression, when you lift on the handlebar, of feeling lighter because the weight is closer to the center of the tractor. That is, it's closer to the fulcrum point, which is your axle. And you're not tripping over the roller when you're making a turn because it's not sticking out here. We, the actual total measurement on this is six inches, six and change. It's like six and a quarter, six and a half inches shorter overall than the BCS roller. Um, and because it's solid, it doesn't fill up with stuff. And it does a beautiful job pressing out the bed. We've got our side panels coming up high enough here that any soil that might have been discharged, like in this area here, is not discharged. It just hits this shield and falls down to the ground and is pressed down to the roller, or pressed down by the roller. The roller is just as wide as the tiller hood. And we find that because we're running this uh, roller so close to the back of the tiller hood, I mean, it's only clearing by about a half an inch right in here where this, this hood comes back like this. We don't have to worry about turning the tines around like you do on the BCS model, because that's one thing they had to do uh, in order to keep it from throwing soil out the sides. Even though they had the rubber mud, mud flap there, they've getting, they were getting enough soil thrown out the sides that it was getting into the pathways and they were losing too much soil out of the actual till bed. Well, we don't have that problem. We've got nice big guards here and we've got the roller tucked up close enough that that soil comes right out and goes under it. It doesn't have a chance to get out of there. So, uh, another mitigation effort we've made here. I want to point out that on this on the Earth Tools version of the precision depth system, we've left the quick coupling in place. Uh, unlike some other precision depth rollers on the market, we didn't feel the need to shorten up the, the uh, coupling distance by that extra three or so inches uh, because this roller is, in fact, six inches shorter than the BCS America version. So now that we have our quick coupling system still in place, we now have a versatile tractor that we can remove and install implements easily because most small farmers are actually running multiple implements on their tractor. That's why they purchased a walk-behind tractor and not just a standard rototiller. Now we're going to talk about optional roller types. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this comes with a solid roller on it. And the solid roller is great <clears throat> when you want to A, not fill the roller up with dirt, and B, you want to leave a nice smooth seed bed. Uh, the, the, uh, the solid roller is going to press everything down, it's going to make it completely flat, well tamped, so that if you're running precision seeding equipment, you just, you've got the perfect bed. The open bar roller that we have as an option is what we're offering for weed control. 
because if you're say going to till some weeds out of your pathways or you're going to do some stale bedding where you're going to let some weeds germinate on the bed top and then run a tiller over it to eliminate those weeds before putting in your vegetable crop um, you don't really want to use a solid roller at all because what a solid roller will do in that condition is now that your tiller has uprooted the weeds and they're laying on the surface a solid roller will press them back into the ground and if you get any kind of little bit of moisture or if the soil has some dampness in it they're just going to re-sprout they're going to re-root and come back up so an open mesh roller is a pretty standard thing in the agriculture industry to roll behind something like this as a precision depth adjustment roller but that has much much less ground contact so we've got more space here than we do ground contact. We've got rounded surfaces with big gaps between them. So as this thing rolls, roughly maybe 25% of the surface area is actually being compressed. So there's much less chance that your weeds are going to come back up. Also, the problem of soil flying back through this thing is not an issue because the gaps are so big, unlike a mesh roller or the slotted roller from BCS, soil's not going to stay in this thing. It'll simply pass right through it and fall out the bottom. So this thing will never, you know, become 50 pounds of soil that you have to lift up on the back. Now, if it does, if this thing starts holding soil, your soil is too wet. You shouldn't even be tilling because it would take some big, you know, sticky clods to actually stick inside of this thing. So we have built this frame in such a way that this roller can be easily changeable. Now, what you'll have to do, you have two three quarter inch wrenches. One quarter inch Allen wrench again to take this one shoulder bolt out. Nice to have a little tote around when you're dealing with stuff like this. And then you just take this thing off. Now the first time you ever take it off it might be a little stiff because the paint is kind of thick on these components and they get a little jammed sometimes. Okay. <clears throat> Ball bearing. Both ends of the roller rotate in the ball bearing. That's the Earth Tools version. The BCS version of this has a steel post in a steel hole with a cotter pin. That's what you get for about $1,000 from BCS. This, about half the price. Um, anyway, we built ours to last. Now, out of here, it just slides the bearing on the opposite side. And we're going to slide this roller in. I have already applied a little bit of grease to these axle ends just because I want them to come out of the bearings next time even after you know they're on there for 39 months in the rain and all that jazz. So a little grease goes a long way when you need to take it back apart at some point. This up, this is right into there. Put this back on. Now this is a little tricky just in getting several things lined up. Obviously your axle has to go back into the bearing. This little bar here, this little pipe, doesn't look like it's doing anything, but welded onto the bottom of this is actually a scraper blade. It's just a piece of flat steel oriented downward. That's really only important for being there when the solid roller is on there, because if you're using the thing in conditions that are a little on the wet side and the dirt is trying to stick to the roller, we don't want it to build up into a huge, you know, rolling pin of dirt. So this this scraper, which is all along the bottom of that pipe running all the way across, actually runs just over the top of this and scrapes the dirt off. It doesn't let any more than a couple millimeters of dirt build up on this. Well, anyway, this scraper bar is supported by this side frame, so you got to get that line back up. So we're going to put this square hole in. We're going to orient this thing and get it in the right place. There we go, I'll slip back into place. Sometimes you have to get out the old dead blow hammer. But we didn't have to do that, it actually went in on its own. Now I'll get this back through here. Put my shoulder bolt back in. Slide back up. There we are. Shoulder, 
and then make sure the shoulder goes down into the hole on the rear bar. There it goes, I heard it pop in. Oh, it did, there we go. There, we're good. Now we have a controller, so we're ready to go out and do some weed control. Of course, if you're doing weed control, you're probably going to go very, very shallow, just a half an inch or so. You don't want to bring up a bunch of extra weed seeds, that's because that's just going to make your problem worse. You just kind of skim the top of the surface. We made this model of, uh, of depth roller system available for the BCS 30-inch tillers in particular, which is what this is on. However, it also fits the BCS 26-inch tiller. This bracket is sized so it meets these inner bolt holes on the tiller hood. And the inner bolt holes on the 30 also are the outer bolt holes on a 26-inch tiller. So you can mount this same frame to a 26-inch tiller, although the roller and frame are going to be 30 inches wide. We only make one model of this roller or the frame and roller assembly. Um, so if you have a 26-inch tiller and want to use the system, you still can. It just sticks out a little on the sides. Uh, we will also soon be offering this to fit the Grillo 27 and 30 inch tillers as well. As of this at the time filming this video, we don't have it ready, but in a month or two we will. So that's it. Thanks for watching.